Thank you. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Day three? Well, I'm Pat Riley. I'm a specialist solutions architect here, and I focus exclusively on generative AI. And me and Yuri are going to talk to you today about the problems that are faced with you all with your retail storefronts online and how generative AI on AWS can help you. Let's get started. We're going to call out some challenges that you all know probably very well. I want to talk to you about some solutions that you can implement on AWS to help solve those problems. And Yuri's going to talk to you about a demo we built that can also be viewed in our kiosk around the corner here about the art of the possible and how you can help your customers shop on your storefront. So we all know what the challenges are. We have been this person before. We know how hard it is to do some things online as a shopper. And you know very well how hard it is to make that easy for them to do. Product discovery alone can be a very challenging thing. I have thousands of products in my catalog. As a shopper, how do I find them as fast as possible? Um, information overload. Great. I, have, I can select from 15 hammers. What's the difference between a framing hammer and a sledgehammer? And which one's better for my wrist? Uh, what kind of project am I going to dive into this weekend? And then, OK, I found some hammers. Which one do I pick? Which has the best reviews? Which one has the most adoption in the industry? These are challenges that are not new, and we're still trying to solve in the industry. Um, and last but not least, generic experiences. We're getting better at making those personal, but there's still a long way to go. And then accessibility. If you can't see or you can't hear, can generative AI help you with those customers shop online? I want to take you through a walk down memory lane and where we've been with retail search for the last couple of decades. In the 90s, we started with rejects search. So is my string literally in, in anything I have in my catalog? We all know how that went. In the 2000s, we moved into search engine optimization. We saw more autocomplete, better UI experiences. So the search experience was more pleasant, but still a long way to go. In the 2020s, now we're starting to see machine learning optimization, some natural language processing, and that experience started vastly improving. And here we are in 2024 talking about chatbots, agentic workflows, and the future of shopping online. And I want to talk to you about how we can do that together. Online shopping assistance will continue to be, if not already, the future of shopping. How can I talk with a lumber specialist to tell me what kind of lumber I need for me building a deck? Do I need treated lumber? Is it uh, framing lumber? Can I go buy thousands of dollars in walnut and just build my deck with walnut? Um, who's going to help me with that? Uh, a generative AI assistant can help you reason through those decisions. Um, how do I improve conversion and shopping cart abandonment? Can they put the right product in the cart the first time or do they have to keep adding and taking things off of the cart? Remove decision paralysis. If you're talking with, say, an agent that's been trained on a specialist uh, body of knowledge, they can distill that decision for you very, very quickly. Instead of uh, chatting with your friend or something, it's analogous to walking down an aisle at, at uh, your home hardware store and asking, you know, what kind of screws should I be using? Um, Reducing information overload. Say in your chatbot window, you can present two to three options with an Add to Cart button. You've immediately removed all of the information overload you would typically experience with your massive storefront. Yuri's going to walk us through what we built to showcase how to solve these problems with our retail assistant demo. Hi. Thank you, Pat. Yep. How is everybody doing? Uh, so uh, my name is Yuri Chamarelli. I'm also a generative AI specialist here with uh, AWS. And uh, I'm going to show you guys what we built. But before I do that, I want to ask one question. I want to see some hands up. How many of you have uh, decided to do a home improvement project? And you went to the home improvement store and didn't even know how to ask what you're looking for? Before. <laughs> I see quite a few hands. Raise your hand, Yuri. Yeah, and it's a. I, <laughs> I, in my household, I measure the complexity of my uh, home improvement projects and trips 
to the home improvement store. We, we like say, ah, that project, remember that, that one took me seven trips, that one took me maybe eight, uh, 10, 12. I'm getting pretty complex these days. I'm building decks and things like that. It takes me 20 trips, but uh, you know. So what we build here is about that challenge. Uh, we, we thought it would be really cool when you learn from customers that uh, they wanted to have online shopping experiences that would help shoppers navigate, discover products, have that walk by digital experience, and also being able to ask questions. We thought, well, which one is the most frustrating one? I think home improvement is pretty high up. So we built that one. Uh, I'm going to play this video. And uh, what I'm doing here, I'm walking through the typical uh, experience, right? It, it, you go, you browse around, you look what, what products are available. and. Uh, and maybe you, you know what you're looking for, ballpark, right? It, it's, uh, I'm, I'm doing some work on my bathroom. I'm going to look at the sinks. I'm going to look at uh, what they have available. And, and by the way, all the imagery that you see and all the descriptions, everything in this fictional website has been generated with Amazon Titan models. Uh, just fun fact on this. Uh, so in this case, I. I knew I needed a sink. But what if you don't know what she needed, right? What if I just want to state a problem? So let's, let's go with that one. Let's try to build an outside deck, right? If you have a house, sometimes you have a little space in the backyard. You want to put a deck over there, have a barbecue, and have some space, something like that. So the chatbot first wants to make sure that you understand what you're doing. Are you sure you want to build that deck? And it's actually telling you a few things you should consider before you do that. And I clarify, yes, I want to build a deck, and it's going to be 10 by 10. And after I confirm that, I, I start getting some product recommendations. And, and that's where you can see where you can provide the customer with that walk by. Right? The first recommendation you see, like, hey, some railing here, uh, some deck stairs. I didn't even know I could buy those ready to go. I thought I had to build that stuff. And I, uh, actually, I can just build a deck and buy those and put it around, install it. right? So I just learned something from the bot. Uh, just like I would learn from a specialist, uh, the home improvement store, if you find them. That's the other challenge. Sometimes you can't find them. Or the home specialist, the home improvement specialist, the lumber specialist, uh, it's a it's a kid on summer break vacation, right? So, uh, so we, we wanted to really tackle this challenge and, and show that, A, generative AI is already at a level, at a stage that can help customers solve this type of challenges, right? So it, again, uh, we're going to go over how we built. How, that's what we built for the demonstration. If you want to see more, uh, come and visit us at uh, the retail kiosk right there. Uh, and we'll show you the live demo. Uh, but the question is how we built that. That's how we built. Uh, I'll walk you guys through everything, but I, I know there are a lot of AWS services over here. It can be a little confusing, but uh, I want you guys to pay attention uh, very close to the right side where we have uh, the integration and the application, right? Uh, the authentication and the React front end is a, a typical AWS. Uh, stack. We, we have a lot of guidance on how to do that. Uh, and you can come with any identity provider or no identity provider for your website, host your React front end in CloudFront S3. Works really well. Uh, and then AppSync, for those familiar, how many of you guys, give me a couple of hands here. GraphQL API, how many of you are familiar with? Good, that's a good number. Uh, AppSync is a GraphQL API. It's full serverless, hosted in AWS. You just build your code, and we will scale and scale up and down as needed. So we, we did choose an AppSync for that demo because it provides us a very easy way to connect the chatbot to DynamoDB, right, and also to connect the product catalog that you guys saw, all the imagery generated by Titan that was also hosted in a DynamoDB table, and it comes through AppSync and so on. So it was, it was an easy way to, us to build a very performant demo. 
Now, how does the chatbot works? Well, we use Amazon Bedrock. I uh, hope you're all familiar with. Uh, I'll, I'll do a little deep dive here in, in the Amazon Bedrock in a second. But, uh, and what we did, we built a product catalog using open search as a vector database. So we came into S3 with all the products, all the images, all the descriptions, details about the products that we created for the home improvement store. Then we convert it into embeddings. Uh, and we use those embeddings in open search. And now we can do not just semantic search, just I'm looking for a sink. That's a semantic search. We can do that in open search as well. But we can also have Bedrock using a Lambda function almost working as an agent to use to understand reason on what the customer is asking for, reason on that, then search open search for what matches that reasoning decision, right? And then it responds back to the user. DynamDB, DynamDB is there as a memory buffer. It's keeping that contextual knowledge flowing, right? Now, like, I know you asked about a outside deck. You got your railing. You have the decking boards. Now you may need some screws. You may need some tools. And keep going with that conversation. It, no, it, don't, it doesn't forget what it told you, right? Uh, and that's very important for a good customer experience. If you want to provide something uh, that your customers are going to enjoy, that contextual knowledge needs to be present all the time. Uh, and, and finally, the last thing I'll, I'll just highlight over here is how easy it is to build with Amazon Bedrock and why. Like, uh, could we go and develop our own model to do that? Yes, yes, you can do that if it makes sense for the use case. Uh, you can go and train your model, fine tune your model, uh, use any model enhancement practices that we support. Amazon SageMaker, for instance, and even in Bedrock, you can customize models today to do the best possible job on the product recommendation, retrieval, and so on. But we, in this case, we use Bedrock because it was agile. We could prove the concept. And I think for a lot of customers, they are trying to find where that shopping experience really is for their company and products. I think Bedrock is a, we think Bedrock is a great place to start because it is agile. It's fast. You can train your models. You can customize if you want. You can use model from many providers, as you, you all have learned. And you also can even play with a agent tech flow. You can use multi-agents, single agents, and so on. And all the security and privacy comes with that. And it needs to be safe because we're dealing with you know, customers that are using website, right? So that is even extra security sensitive. Uh, with the QR codes that you guys have over there for feedback, we appreciate your feedback. That's how we make this better. Thank you. <laughs>